All right, so first of all, thank you for coming. It's great to be here for the fourth time in a row. This time I'm going to change the tune a bit, and I'm not going to speak about NLP. Shocker. Um, I'm going to spend 15 minutes to talk about getting the most out of your existing data without growing the data science team. And, well, the risk of being a repeat speaker is that you can really bore people. But lucky for us, we've been through so many changes that there are so many things to talk about. And those changes also come with a lot of data. So we're, Swisscom is data rich. We have so many ways of interacting with customers that it gives us a wealth of opportunities. It's so many opportunities that no matter how much we try to grow the data science team, and we do, um, you just always have more things that you cannot look at. So any synergies that you can find between tasks are going to help. So let me give you, give you an example of an opportunity that we did take recently. This is the new Swisscom TV box. It understands your commands in all of the Swiss languages. And it, it resulted from a lot of effort in understanding communication, in understanding customers, three years' worth of work. And now it's live. And we couldn't be happier. And we would like your feedback. And in the process, you know, become Swisscom customers. But all of that was possible because we were ready to make the jump. So Michael came here last year to discuss how to redesign a company for AI. Now, it's all about bringing down the silo walls. You have so many different verticals in companies that don't speak to each other. And if you want to do any ML, you need to tear down those walls. But I'm here to talk about what comes next. I mean, once you have this horizontal layer where data can flow and information can flow, what then? What do you do? And the first thing that hits you is that there are so many opportunities. I mean, there's, there's a wealth of things that you can do because you have the data. I mean, you could, you could build a churn model or a recommender system or a better one, or you can implement those diversity policies or look at fairness. I mean, there's so many things that you can do at once. Any synergies that you can find between these different topics will allow you to better prioritize. And this is the major question. How do you prioritize? I'm going to try to break this down into three so that it becomes more manageable. What else is this data good for? If you have some data that you already understand, that you have experience with, and you're using for task A, is it possible to find a task B that would benefit from that? How can I integrate a lot of objectives and constraints into the same pipeline? And most real-world problems are tough. You're not just optimizing for one thing. And third, am I using all the knowledge that I have for one specific problem? Because sometimes you have a problem where if you just added another data set or if you add a new type of behavior from the customer, you would have so much better results. So let's take them one by one. So the first one is data reusability. And when you think of Swisscom, you mostly think of you know, our network. We're the winners, by the way. And um, how, what, what else can you do with that? And this is a, like, a byproduct of communication. If your network team speaks to your um, corporate responsibility team, well, you immediately think about measuring the CO2 um, emissions. And the data that is appropriate for both is the mobility data, your mobility data. But hold on, hold on, hold on. don't panic. It's not you in particular. We're aggregating this, we're anonymizing it, and there's still some signal left once you do the aggregation. There's so much signal, actually, that it allows us to identify the CO2 footprint of an entire country. So, Marcel, if you're looking for ideas, this is it. Um, we're going to have a talk on this in the AI for Industry track tomorrow. Now, going from that into fixing the problem of multiple objectives, we run into disbelief. But what if I told you that you can have AI fairness without hurting your profits, for instance? People don't believe that. What if I told you that you can have a recommender system that is accurate, that will add novelty to the results and at the same time increase revenue, and then 
also tackle different objectives which are not correlated with the former, like diversity and fairness? This is possible. And because it's possible, we can turn things that we just wish for into next steps. I mean, who does not want a uh, diverse team? I mean, this is on the strategic goals of every company. But it's hard. I mean, what do you do now? You have a goal, but you need to take an action. For instance, you want to hire a person. But when you think of diversity, you need to think of you know, age diversity, gender diversity, language diversity, because Switzerland, um, nationality diversity, and so on. I mean, it's a hard problem. And you cannot just solve the diversity problem on its own. You need to also look at you know, hiring the right person. And you also need to act in the public good. You cannot just decide, I'm not going to hire from this pool of people. I don't know, Caucasian males. I'm just not going to look at those. So fairness, diversity, together with all of the other constraints, make for a hard problem. So what do you do when you have a hard problem? Well, you should look at the literature, and this is what we did. The first method that we saw was re-ranking. So you have a list of things that you want to rank, and you talk to, take the top K, and then you rank those with a second objective, and then you take the top of that, and then, oops, I can't rank anymore. Um, there's a funnel problem here. Re-rank it does not scale in the number of objectives. So, Obviously, it's better if you have all this done at once. So if you have a solution, iterate, make it better. And evolutionary algorithms seem like a good bet here. Only that they don't scale in the number of interactions you have. So it's quadratic in the number of users, for instance. In the real world, that's a no-go. And then you have a better approach, a weighted sum. I mean, yeah, I have three objectives. I'm going to weigh each one. Combine, it's done. This is actually a good approach. It's a, it's a hard baseline. But it suffers that those weights are fixed, and you miss out on the trade-offs. You cannot find the sweet spot between the various objectives, which is why, for us, a better solution is to just look at multi-gradient descent. So how does this work? I mean, you have each objective comes with a loss, the thing that you want to minimize. So the overall loss is just an aggregation of the individual ones. And to minimize that, you have a common descent vector where you follow the gradient, and the overall gradient is just a weighted sum of the individual gradients. And then, I do have other slides. Right, OK. So this is a uh, quadratic constraint optimization problem. And to find this um, common gradient descent, you need to find the right weights. If you have only two of them, then you can have a closed form. If not, you need the Frank-Wolf algorithm. The problem is that this didn't really work at us, for us. It, the first tries were all messed up. And that was because all of the gradients had different ranges. But once we normalized these gradients and we just divided everything by their original value, putting them roughly into 0, 1, things started to work. So I'm going to show you briefly a few results that we got on recommending movies. So you're going to see a graph here where we look at revenue together with recall. Recall is just a measure of how well we're doing from the customer's perspective. So each dot that you see here is one solution. You want to be close to the intersection of those two lines, which is the utopia. It, you, you want to maximize revenue and recall at the same time. So the first colors are pink and brown. And you can see that no, pink is here, bottom right, and brown is top left. They, they do what they should. They maximize for the objective that you're telling them to, to maximize. But then for the other objective, they do a bad job. And then if you have the re-ranking approach, you can see that all of the solutions there are dominated by others. So it's really bad. And if you look at the weighted sum, they're actually better, significantly better than the signal objective and re-ranking. But still, they're all clustered together. They, they don't form a nice Pareto front. You cannot see the trade-off here. You cannot fine-tune. 
which is exactly what the multi-gradient descent does. And it doesn't really hurt your eye. I mean, it's better, but it's not so much better. But that changes if instead of the revenue, you have diversity. Okay? For movies, we said we're going to push educational content. So let's see how many documentaries we can push to people without them being unhappy. And if you look at the number of documentaries, you can go to 25% of all the recommendation being documentaries, and you still do a proper job. And again, you have the same shapes. The single uh, objective does not properly uh, mix the, the two. Right, we're going to go in depth in this either at the booth or next week at AAAI. And finally, you want to manage your knowledge efficiently. Normally, if you have one problem to fix, you want to recommend things, or you want to know if people would recommend your product, the famous NPS. You have a few data sources, and you build them into a model. And then you have another task, let's say detecting market trends. The data sources might be similar or identical, but it's a different model. And then you have another model for recommenders, and so on. They're all distinct. And then you should ask, wouldn't it be great if my recommender knew that with a very high confidence this person is going to churn to give up on my service? Wouldn't it be great in that specific instance to say, I'm going to deprioritize revenue in this moment so that I keep the customer? Well, this is exactly what multitask learning promises you have a single stack where you learn the semantics of the user behavior. So somewhere in the middle there, here we go again, right. You have a way of representing the user. Only trouble is, this is tough to do, because you don't know which tasks share what. And since we don't know, well, we hope we can learn. And in the process, use all of the things that we've learned from neural architecture search. And this is something that we're going to present a bit later this year, how to share weights efficiently. Now, this was it for me. I'm going to leave you with these three thoughts. How can you get the most out of your data? And how can you put all of the constraints in there and share the knowledge efficiently? Thank you.